Welcome to my first Paint With Me video. Today we will be painting a Calathea rattlesnake plant. For this you will need brushes, a bowl with water, a palette, watercolors, pencil, watercolor paper, and that's it. Let's get started. First we will mix two random colors. I'm going to choose a purple and a light blue. When mixing colors, I like to cook with a little bit of what I have in the palette, not just use the colors straight from the palette. After we have our color ready, we will go ahead and wet all our paper. We add pigment to one edge of the paper and bring it down. More pigment to the edge and bring it all the way down. With these, we can see that watercolor pigment goes a long way and we don't really need to use a lot when working with it. For our second paper, we will be doing the same, but this time with another pigment as well. We wet the paper and add pigment to one of the edges. And once we bring it down, we will add the second color pigment to the other edge of the paper. This technique is called wet on wet and is to show you how we can work mixing one color with the other and make a gradient seamlessly. Voila! Now we will do the technique called wet on dry. I'm drawing a circle on top of my paper which is already dried and now add the pigment on top. As you can see, when we use wet on dry, the colors don't mix at all and this is to make different layers without mixing the colors on it. Now that we have that off the way, we will start with our rattlesnake plant. Before painting, I want you to look at your plant and see where the light hits the most. How are the edges of your leaves? What colors do you see? Where does the shadow hit? Where does the light hit? And make a very rough sketch of it, because the details will be done with the watercolors and the fine liner we work at the end. When I mix my colors, in this case, green, I don't only use the green colors in my palette, but I actually like to cook the colors with pretty much every color on the palette. When we see colors in real life, we don't only see a blue made out of blue, but it actually ref reflects every color in the rainbow. The more time we take making and cooking our colors, the more special our palette will be. Before we get into the leaf, I worked on three different shades of green. Now that we have the rough sketch, we will start working with the lightest layers of the leaf. When we work with watercolors, we want to work layer upon layer, but we want to go from light to dark. So first, we can cover all of our leaf with what will be our lightest color. Once this is dry, we can start adding more layers, each one of them a shade more dark. While we let that dry, we're going to work on our darkest green. And just as we did before, in order to make green, we will use most of the colors in the palette. Once our brighter layer is done, I'm going to go ahead and paint some of our darker areas. I've come to realize this leafy looking patterns inside the Calathea leaf are very dark and at the same time I've come to see that the middle part to the bottom of the leaf always gets more shadow than the top part and that is because that area of the leaf isn't flat but has some movement to it and light hits it differently. As we work on one of our darkest areas on the leaf, now we have a better idea of all the range of green shades we can work around with. As we've let our first layer dry, these leafy pattern areas are not bleeding into the background color.
while we let the patterns dry, we start to work on some middle tones. And while those are drying up, we can start adding more and more layers on top of it. Something I love about watercolors is that it's a technique that asks us to be present. If we go and get a tea or something, once we come back, we won't be able to make changes to it. Another thing I've realized about calathea leaves is that the edges of the leaf are darker than the middle parts, so this is something I can also start working with. Now that we have a bigger range of grays, we can start darkening up the areas with more shadow. The more we observe our subject, the more we'll be able to work on all the details it has. And now that we're working on our second leaf, we will follow the same rules as we did on the first one. We start with the brightest colors, then go to some of the areas with more shadow, and that way we can open up our range of shades. Also, for the second one, I decided to add some back part of the leaf, as Calathea has a beautiful purple back color to it. When we're finished working in the watercolor, we'll let it dry completely. And if you want to add some fine liner work like I do, here is a little tutorial. Each person has a different way of making shadows. I personally use dots and eyes because there's a whole, and there's a whole reason behind why I do that. First, I do the contour of the whole leaf and then start using these as a resource to make my shadows bring even more contrast to the final product. I follow the patterns that we've worked on with watercolors. I make way more dots and way more lines when my watercolor is darker and way less where the bright parts of the leaf hit. I encourage you to take your time and discover in which way you like to use fine liner. Some people do lines, some people do doodles, some people do lines to two different sides. I do the dots and the eyes. So please don't copy the way that I do. I highly recommend that you find your own way of doing shadows. This is probably my favorite part of the whole process. I love working in all the details and I feel that adding the fine liner work is what gives my painting life at the end of the day. Thank you so much for watching. I would love to see the leaves that you made. So if you did work on this leaf, please make sure to tag me here on my Instagram because I would love to see your work. If you like this video, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. And I want to keep on creating free content for all of you guys. So instead of opening a Patreon with private links, I've opened a page called Buy Me A Coffee where you can now support me with as little as $5 and this is very much appreciated. You can find the website on my description box. And I'll see you next time. Bye!